Amidst the turmoil in Europe caused by Germany, Japan on the other side of the world found itself in a quagmire. Japan had been at war with China for a decade and it had not gone according to their expectations. Japan expected a swift victory over its neighbors, but despite their initial success, the country ran into a steady resistance that slowed their progress. China is a vast and heavily populated country. This put Japan at a disadvantage. But in addition to that, the Japanese were in need of many raw materials to continue on in China. They had acquired a great deal from their invasion of Manchuria in 1931, but they needed more to survive the world war that was yet to advance. Japan had yet to emerge into the global conflict that was raging in Europe. Rather, their strategy was to silently expand into new territory while the Western powers were preoccupied with Germany and Italy. Germany had dominated France and Britain in a corner while keeping peace with Russia for the time being. This peace was maintained by the German-Soviet Pact of 1939. Japan was able to depend on the peace between themselves and the looming USSR as long as Germany and Russia kept from clashing with each other. This allowed Japan to push south. As seen in the map of the Asian continent, Japan had already expanded into the eastern China as a part of their empirical conquest. Now, the Japanese empire made its push into the south. Because Japan did not have to fear an attack from the Soviets, as they would not likely fight in a two-front war, Japan could freely acquire the French and British colonies by force. Japan sent troops into northern French Indochina in September of 1940. A week after Japan's push into northern French Indochina, they entered into the Tripartite Pact, commonly known as the Axis Powers, with Germany and Italy. This signing made the alliance official. Then, in June of 1941, Germany attacked Russia. Japan was torn as to whether they should join in the fighting. Some Japanese leadership claimed that Germany would prevail without assistance, while others thought that Germany overstepped their capabilities, all while underestimating Russia's strength. The Empire of Japan did not see the benefits of attacking Russia, as the territory had minimal resources to cash in on. This decision may have changed the course of the entire war, as the Japanese invasion of Russia would have major implications for the Soviets. The push into Indochina was vital to the Japanese expansion. It offered raw resources, but more importantly, it allowed Japan to establish air and naval bases to control the South China Sea. More economically beneficial was the Netherlands Indies. These islands were rich in oil and would allow Japan to become more self-efficient in their resources of which the value cannot be underestimated in time of war. The main purposes of acquiring these colonies was not only the success in China, but also against the threat of the Western powers. Japan knew that the Western powers must be faced eventually, and they felt like they were prepared. The U.S. Neutrality Act from 1936 stated that they were not aid countries who were at war, but President Roosevelt felt the need to help the allies in China in the crisis with Japan. Roosevelt then decided to end trade with Japan after Japan signed the Tripartite Pact. Eventually, the U.S., Place an embargo on Japan's shipments of oil and scrap metal, and in 1941, the U.S. froze all Japanese assets. This would affect Japan's war efforts in China. Tojo, the new prime minister, was willing to make negotiations with the U.S. and preserve the peace. However, the Japanese leadership blamed the U.S. for prolonging the war in China by sending aid to them. At the Empirical Conference of, in November of 1941, Japan wanted the U.S. to resume trade 
and start negotiations. This time, Japan had serious shortage of oil, but also wanted to show firmness and determination if the proposals were not agreed upon. If the U.S. did not agree, Japan planned to go further into Southeast Asia to obtain oil by the use of force. The deadline for such agreement was December 1st. The U.S. intercepted and decoded a Japanese dispatch that during the time of negotiations, Japan was sending reinforcements into Indochina. The U.S. response was a whole note. The U.S. wanted Japan out of China, and they were not going to resume trade with China while they were in alliance with Hitler. Churchill sent word to Roosevelt expressing concerns for China and wanted to fully align with the U.S., but also did not want to extend the war any further. The whole note provoked Japan and was seen as an ultimatum. Therefore, war was inevitable. The U.S. had no idea what was going to occur in just a little over a week when Japan surprised attacked Pearl Harbor. The Japanese had already sent troops toward Hawaii, although Japanese diplomats in Washington still thought an agreement could be settled and did not know the planes that Tokyo had already decided to go to war with the U.S. Japan was under economic pressure, but they were not going to submit to the U.S. Japan was unwilling to accept any of the unreasonable proposals that U.S. put offered. They would not give up the new order in East Asia, retreat from Manchuria, and they were concerned about their reputations if they were to withdraw from the tripartite pact. December 1st was when Japan decided to proceed with war. Admiral Yamamoto was determined to strike the first blow. On December 7th, the Japanese government sent over to the embassy stating in determination for any further negotiations. Then, on December 8th, Japan officially declared war. The strain against Japan and the U.S. had been es escalating for over a decade, and war seemed inevitable. Japan had to defend its status as a major war power, and the only way to defend their name was to attack. On December 7, 1941, Japanese bombers fired its first bomb at Pearl Harbor at 7.55 a.m. For 30 minutes, Pearl Harbor was attacked with bombs, guns, and torpedoes. A second attack hit at 8.50 a.m. and ended around 9 a.m. In one hour, Japan destroyed 180 aircrafts, dozens of ships, and had killed 2,400 men. What happened around the U.S. during the time of the attack was pure shock. Yamamoto spent months planning this attack to destroy Pearl Harbor, but also to destroy the morale in the U.S. Navy. But instead, the, Jap the Japanese had awoken the U.S. and it had the U.S. had entered World War II. At first, Pearl Harbor seemed like a success for Japan, but they did not destroy the Pacific fleet. The Japanese bombers completely missed the repair facilities, oil tanks, and the ammunition sites. And the biggest failures was that there was no U.S. aircraft carriers that was present during the Pearl Harbor attack. Prior to the attack of Pearl Harbor, the U.S. wanted to stay neutral and committed to only sending war supplies to the Allies. But after Pearl Harbor, they were forced to attack the Axis powers. President Franklin Roosevelt called December 7, 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor a date which will live in infamy.